France starts to learn that her treachery is making alliances hard to forge. Well, right now, I did not expect them to move out of Munich, so right now I'm trying to do damage control and just make sure that I'm preventing them from going into Paris. As it happens, her spot in the Northern Alliance doesn't stay vacant for long. Yeah, it, was the, it was the North Sea Alliance, and then France stabbed, and stabbed me in the back. So then it was England and Germany against France. France has another enemy. Let's see if Italy wants to be up against France. I was already talking with Italy separately about our mutual enemies on either side of Switzerland. And then later I was talking to England, and England said, or maybe I just said, Are you averse to sharing victory with Italy? I would be open to that. Okay. Um, he, he's also uh, said that's okay with him to share okay. with you. So, see okay. if this so diagonal axis can do some, do some damage. In the east, Turkey and Russia confirm their mutual trust, while Austria, still hanging on with two units, seeks allies. The orders phase sees England supporting Germany's effort to take back Belgium, which France rebuffs. However, with her resources entangled up north, Italy's able to invade and hold Marseille on the south coast. Yeah, I think I'm opposed. Everything's so broken up, I'm going to be, like, lose. I know I'm probably going to lose this next turn. And... We'll see. England, meanwhile, ends up scoring big on her gamble with Russia, gaining not just Norway, but Sweden, both of which contain supply centers. I'm like actually shaking because I think there's a chance we might win. win. Okay. I have not felt before. Okay. Is France, is France have a fleet there? Uh, no. She has all her fleets, fleets in land right And now. she just disbanded Brest. Oh, she did? Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yes. So she only has the one here? Yep. Yeah. England and Germany decide to put Russia on a long leash while they turn their attention to France. I would be fine to just leave our the Russian-German border as it is for the moment. Okay. I've got bigger fish. I've got bigger fish to fry. Uh, so I felt personally betrayed by France, and I wanted to make sure that I could actually that I wanted to work with uh, England and Italy to completely destroy France and get back into the situation where. We all have this like safe back border that we just move forward on the on our shared front border. Fleet in uh, BAL moves to KIE. And they what? The price they pay for that becomes clear during that turn's moves when Russia feels free to invade Germany. The latter half of 1905 sees Turkey talking with Italy about the fleet that's lurking in the Ionian Sea. Are you willing to let me keep the Ionian Sea? Ooh. That's tough. Because it's very close to my home. If you block the Ionian Sea, I have no channel for getting out of where I am if I want to move further on. Further on to where? I don't know. It's all my territory. Is it? I let you have it this turn. If I see any attempt, which I will most likely block, but if I see a support on helping in, in, in someone going to Greece, or I see anything, all bets are off. That's fair. All right. Italy was trying to push out both borders, and Italy was very much on my border at one point, and I was just, I really wanted to push out, but Italy tend, seemed to have several alliances that made me a little defensive about pushing out. Um, I don't know, I just, I didn't trust Italy. <laughs> this is enough to get him talking with his neighbor to the north about the Italian threat. I am just going to let you know, I'm going to uh, throw you another bone because I, I want to make sure that Italy does not get anything more. Okay. And so long as you stay in Serbia, I'm willing to support you holding there, which I'm assuming you're going to do because otherwise you're not going to yep. get that supply center. Yep. My assumption was that uh, any time now, uh, Turkey was going to decide to stop wasting time and just move straight through me. Turkey never actually did that. Um, and so I was happy as long as Turkey wasn't going to come after me to actually work with Turkey. Um, to harass Italy. I have this fleet here, obviously, yes, for boys to take yeah, Portugal. Yes, I realize that. Um, you have this fleet in the English Channel that I really don't want there. Okay, I can move that out of there if you do not take Portugal. Yes, um, I would, if you move your fleet out of the English Channel into Picklehead, Picklehead, <laughs> whatever that's called. England is confident enough about her position over France to openly belittle the names of Gallic provinces. Russia, who by 1906 has become ad hoc leader of the increasingly disillusioned Eastern players, sees an opportunity in this. Yeah, see, I told her I wouldn't. And that totally distracts her. But she's, she's going to win. Yeah. If, if she doesn't have to worry about Dennis or you, yes. she's going to win. So at the, at the, you're not going to win, right? Yeah. 
right? Yes. I'm not going to win, but at the very least, we can disrupt your plans. Yes, exactly. So, so by, by doing that. So if I move from canal to... Irish Sea. Uh, <laughs> in, the Mid-Atlantic is moving to Spain, and London holds. France. I'm happy to stay friends. Um, and so the uh, <laughs> army in Spain moves to Portugal. <laughs> Was not expecting that. France's ill-timed sidestep from Spain to Portugal leaves the whole Iberian Peninsula free for the taking by the combined English and Italian navies. It's a lot of Oreo. Yeah, I'm hungry. Go on. No, thanks. But I'm, I'm, I'm very happy to distract Germany on its eastern front. I. I have to say again that I'm not able to turn on Germany, so I'm not going to make a move on Germany if you're. Okay, but you're. Are you? Are you? You're going after France, or are you going after Russia? I cannot comment at this time. I see. Okay, I'll right, help you. Something. Yeah. Okay, I guess we have nothing more to talk about unless you want to renegotiate anything. This late in the game, England is confident enough in her position to simply shut players down. I'm sorry. Yeah. Italy, having sealed his alliance with England, also stops wasting his breath on Austria. Uh, if you come up with a proposition. Otherwise, I'm just going to sit on it and you're not taking it. Because I'm not trying to go anywhere there either. Alright? We're saying World War I very nicely. Are we? Sides are slightly different. Yeah. But yes, don't we have basically two major blocks? Especially since I just saw France go talk to Russia at the beginning of this year. <laughs> yeah. Italy's observations were borne out, as over the next couple of turns, the three-way England-Germany-Italy alliance routed France and rebuffed Russia, while Austria never regained his original foothold, and Turkey never really emerged from his turtle shell defense in the corner of the map. I, play, I think I played way too defensively, honestly. I didn't take enough risks. I, I really should have talked to Russia and just said, you know what, we should just bowl over Austria, because um, there was just no real reason to let him live. After 1908 and 16 full turns, we had to call it for time. We had blocked out six hours for gameplay, but at that point found ourselves stumbling into the seventh. Nonetheless, we did achieve consensus among the players of who won the day. England had was really the upper hand. I think probably everyone's going to say England. I guess I'm going to go with England. I think she played a very good game. There's just no way that Turkey and I could have stood up against England, Germany, and Italy. I guess the question in my mind is whether the uh, alliance between England and Germany would have held. I think most likely it would have ended up with just the three of us and we would have split them in. My personal choice actually probably would have been to try to eliminate Germany, but the alliance between Germany and England was so strong that I was afraid that if I attacked Germany, England would also attack me, which I didn't think I could win. I think that my alliance of Germany and Italy and I would have won. I feel pretty confident that we would have won. You know, just looking at the board as it ended, you could see that we, unless something drastic happened, we would have won. Beyond the drama of the diplomacy itself and the tension as each turn's moves are revealed, diplomacy is known for its length. It can be hard to gather six of your friends for what amounts to an entire workday or longer of playing a single board game. That's why a culture of playing diplomacy through the mail sprouted soon after the game's original publication. In more recent years, this culture easily adapted itself to the internet. The Diplomatic Pouch at Diplome.org bills itself as the official home of the hobby, containing a vast array of resources for both new players and veterans. And WebDiplomacy.net is one of several sites where you can play the game over the web at a leisurely pace, often with several days in between turns. Thank you for joining me for this episode of The Game Shelf. As always, you can visit the show's website at gameshelf.jmac.org to watch any of our episodes, browse our show notes, subscribe to our blog, or leave feedback. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks again to Wizards of the Coast for providing us with our studio copy of Diplomacy. And the next time you're in turn of the century Europe, watch your back. Well, I mean, I know you can never really trust anybody in these kinds of games. See you next time.